welcome to Pantry Planting, our new video series. In this series, we'll be doing a little home gardening with you using what you probably already have in your kitchen. I'm Sarah, I'm one of the farmers here at Edible Garden City and today I'm going to share with you how to grow your own chia seed microgreens. All you need to grow your chia seed microgreens are water so I've just got it in a spray can really convenient but if you don't it's fine too chia seeds of course um, using Bob's Red Mill but you don't have to use this brand um, just check the ingredients and make sure it's just whole chia seeds and no additives in there you need some paper towels and lastly just a regular plastic container so I'm using a takeaway container but you can use anything that has a lid on it like that so even the containers at the supermarket where they put grapes in, those work pretty well too. Okay, first things first, we'll start with the plastic container. Get it open. Take the paper towel and just lay it in there. Kind of like this. Then, water bottle, spritz, spritz, spritz. Make sure it's nice and uh, damp. So all over, but not so much that it's uh, leaking. Take it like that. Take your chassis and just uh, do a sprinkle all over. Try and even it out as much as you can. Um, but it's okay if it's dense, that's good because then you get more microgreens. So one seed gives you one sprout, so you can imagine if you lay it all out like that, how much uh, microgreens you'll be getting. Spray bottle, spritz again, just to get them wet. And I like chia seeds a lot because uh, I like that texture they give when they become wet. And uh, they make me feel really healthy because honestly my diet's like a whole bunch of junk food plus chia seeds. So um, yeah, lots of good omega-3 fatty acids um, and uh, generally just very good for health. So after you've spritzed them, just cover them like that, uh, keep them anywhere without direct sunlight and in about 2-3 days they should germinate, let them continue growing, you can uncover them at that point. At about 7-8 days, they should be grown about 1.5-2 inches. At that point, they'll be just the right size microgreens. You can just harvest them, harvest them and eat them. And um, they're really good in salads or sandwiches. They taste kind of earthy, um, but in a good, healthy, nice green kind of way. Right, so thank you for joining me today on Pantry Planting. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have, uh, just drop us a comment. Uh, if you have, grown microgreens before, chia seed microgreens, just let us know how it went as well. And meanwhile, uh, stay tuned for our next video which will be coming out soon. Welcome to Pantry Planting, our video series where we do a little home gardening with you using items you likely already have in your kitchen. My name is Mandy, one of the farmers at Edible Garden City and today I'm going to share with you how you can grow your own green bean sprouts. So what you need is green beans, a clean container. Today I'm using a used uh, Chinese New Year container. Spray bottle, a clean bowl, kitchen towel, and optional something heavy and a dark colored cloth. Right, so first, uh, take a bowl with some water and pour a handful of green beans and soak them for about 8 to 12 hours. 
So I have already pre-soaked uh, some green beans overnight for about 12 hours already. So you can see some of them have already germinated. Take your clean container. So if you have a vegetable colander at home, that will work too. Take a piece of kitchen towel, fold it nicely and line it at the bottom of the container. And then spray it generously with water just so that the kitchen towel is soaked. And then take your uh, soaked be green beans and pour it in. And then spread them evenly like this. And you can take another piece of kitchen towel and cover the green beans with it so that it will prevent uh, moisture loss. So you can water them uh, about twice a day. So once in the morning and once at night. Okay, so these are optional steps. You can take something heavy like a jam jar or a glass and put it on top of your beans. So by doing so, the weight will encourage the sprouts to grow shorter and fatter, which means you'll get juicier sprouts. And next, you can take your dark coloured cloth and cover the container loosely like this. This is so that the sunlight wouldn't reach your container. Uh, your sprouts will remain yellow, it wouldn't turn green. If you don't have a dark coloured cloth, you can put your container in somewhere where the sunlight doesn't reach, like a microwave or in your oven will work too. So in about 3 to 5 days, your bean sprouts will grow about 5 to 7 cm and you can harvest them. So over here, I have some green beans that I planted 2 days ago and they are about this big already. So I'll wait for another day before I harvest them. Uh, what you can do is, you can remove the roots and wash them thoroughly with water before you cook them. Um, so I've tried making spicy bean sprout salad, like those you can find in a Japanese ramen restaurant and also stir fry it with some salted fish. Thank you for watching the video. If you have tried growing your own green bean sprouts, let us know how it went for you. Meanwhile, stay safe and happy growing. Hi, welcome to another episode of Pantry Planting where we do a little home gardening with you. Today, I'm going to show you how to grow Easy peasy peanuts! The most important thing here is your peanuts. So the peanuts here, you can get either the shelled ones, like what I have over here from the supermarket. If you manage to get your hands on the ones with shell, it will be better because they are fresher. You will have a higher percentage of sprouting. Other than that, make sure you have a large pot, about 18 inch at least, so that when peanuts fruit, there's space for the groundnuts to grow. Other than the peanuts, you will need a container with cover, some kitchen service, and a little bit of water. You want to start off by laying your container with a piece of kitchen towel. Wet the kitchen towel thoroughly. Place your peanuts in, ensuring that there is about 1 cm space in between for it to sprout. To be on a safer side, put in a few more than what you need. Place another layer of kitchen towel on top of the peanuts and wet it. Cover the container with the lid and we are done. Water your peanuts daily. They should sprout after 2-3 to three days. You can then pot them into your cactus soy mix. Hi, so this is my peanut plant that is about 1 month old. It doesn't have flowers yet, but I just want to show you where the flowers will grow and how do you know when to harvest it. After the yellow flower is produced at the lower part of the stem, 
it will self-fertilize and then produce a stem-like structure that is known as a peg, PEG peg. This peg will penetrate into the ground and from there the groundnuts will then start to mature. So you will know it's just about the right time to harvest when the leaves turn yellow. And also you will be able to see the groundnuts from the surface of the soil. Take one out to harvest first, check on it, make sure that it's fully mature, then only you pull out the rest. You don't pull out all at once. Generally it takes about four to five months from seed to fruit. Also to mention, this flower pot over here is not big enough for the peanuts to grow. I have a very big one outside, which I'll be transplanting my plants over here into it so that the groundnuts have space to grow. watching this video if you like this kind of content do check out our instagram page for more let us know if you have tried it show us pictures of it and we'll see you soon happy growing hi welcome to pantry planting our new video series in this series we're gonna do a little home gardening with you using fruits and vegetables you find at home I'm Mandy, one of the farmers here at Edible Garden City and today I'm going to share little tips and tricks on how you can regrow spring onions. These are the materials you require. Spring onions, a knife, chopping board, a glass of water, an optional, potting mix and a spray bottle. Okay, first, take your spring onions, uh, chop it off leaving the bulb and the roots intact. So be careful when you're handling knife. So give it about uh, 3 to 4 cm for it to uh, regrow. And then uh, wash the roots first. I've already pre-washed them. And then take a glass of water and put it in. So there you go. Uh, two things to remember. So number one is, uh, please change the water daily and um, don't put too much water uh, because the bulb will turn decay and uh, soggy. Alright, so here's another option. Um, you can take your bulb and then you can actually grow it in soil as well. So these are just regular potting mix. So first you make a small hole in the middle and then put it deep enough so that the ends and roots are in the soil. And then apply some pressure and water it. So just water it daily and put it somewhere where you can get direct and full sunlight. So in my case, I'll put it just uh, by my window in the kitchen. So um, like many people, I use spring onions as garnish in my whole tofu and uh, fried rice. So having some fresh uh, regrown spring onions will definitely come in. So there you go, thank you for watching the video. Um, if you have tried regrowing spring onions at home, do share with us in the comments. Um, so stay tuned for more videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Meanwhile, stay safe and happy planting. Hi, welcome to Pantry Planting. Our new video series will be doing a little bit of gardening with you using what you already have in your kitchen. Maya and I'm a farmer here at Edible Garden City and today I'll be doing a little experiment with you guys to know how to grow a tomato from a tomato. Uh, very healthy. If you go to the market and you don't buy the very perfect tomatoes. 
<laughs> that is because the more perfect tomatoes requires more and more pesticides to maintain its perfection. Are you willing to go through that for a perfect tomato? I guess not. <laughs> So for this, you need a spray bottle, a bowl, a mesh strainer, any container you can find around the house, a cutting board and a knife, a spoon, a paper towel, some soil that you can get from any nursery, a spade, or you can also use your hands, and of course, a tomato fruit. Did you know that tomato that you buy in the store is actually very nutritious, but if you're growing them yourself, they will be much more delicious. So today, I'll show you guys how to grow tomatoes with using two different methods. The first thing I'm going to show you guys today is to have a seed from a tomato fruit. For this, you can take your knife and cut the tomatoes in two. So you can see over here, it's a bit hard to see the, the seeds. So you want to sort of like cut the flesh out. So you can get your seeds in here. So you don't take your spoon and scoop them out them in the mesh over here. All right, and once you have this over here, you can just slowly press it down, sort of like take out as much flesh as you can before you go and dry them. So this method is a bit more tedious to do, it takes a bit more time, but at least you are able to get some dry seeds and this will allow you to store them uh, paper towel and then slowly get your seeds out you get your seeds over here you can leave to dry oops you can leave to dry somewhere in your kitchen or something and once they are dry then you can store them and you can plant them and get your tomatoes to grow from this Okay, so the second method is actually to just take a slice of tomato and plant it. So we'll call it the, the fresh method. So for this, you need a container. This is quite high, but a couple of inches high is good enough, actually, because they won't really need space to grow roots. And you want to have some soil in there, like just any potting soil from the nursery is good enough. Just like something fluffy and nice, so they have, um, it's loose enough for them to, to grow roots. So once you have this, you can get your tomato. Just cut a slice, making sure that there are seeds in the slice, so there are some over here. And then you can just put it inside your container and cover it with a little bit of soil. You don't want to be putting too much soil because then it will just dig in and um, it, might, it might just rot inside, right? But you, want to, you don't want to beat up to the air because then it might rot as well. It might just attract some insects. So just cover it a little bit. Then you can give it a little bit of water. Usually potting soil are quite dry. So you can go ahead and really drench it at least for its tight. And that's about it. Once you have this, you can keep it somewhere in the dark. When your little baby has sprouted, you're going to have to put it in somewhere in the sun. So you can put it somewhere, maybe next to a window in your kitchen, at first, at least, because you don't really want to put it in the full sun when it's going to burn. And then for the rest, we'll talk to you in the next video. So you see that the tomato that we use actually has mold on it, you know, like you have some over here, some over there. Most of us would think that we're actually just going to throw it away. But you see, we got some seeds out of it, we got a slice, we got more tomatoes out of it, and we can even eat it. I really like tomatoes in general, they're just very fresh, it's very cooling, you can put in salad, you can cook with it, you can dry them in the oven, like, it's just really amazing.